my name is Maham and I crochet cute things. I'm so excited for today's video. I've been wanting to design and crochet tops for the longest time and I'm finally going to today. This is going to be a little bit different from the videos that I usually post but it's still going to have all the things that you love about my tutorials. In this video the focus is going to be more on my design process and teaching you the techniques and the skills that I use to design and crochet my own tops but it also has demonstrations on what stitches I'm using and how I'm crocheting the tops. So you can use this video to learn how to design and crochet your own tops from scratch or you can follow my process and crochet the tops that I'm making. The size is customizable for all of the tops. There's no specific pattern or measurement to follow. I know that this is something you guys love about my tutorial so I wanted to make sure that you could customize these tops and make them any size that you want. I start every project with a quick sketch of what I have in mind. I found that this makes it easier for me to section the top into different parts and then figure out what stitch or technique to use for each part. For this top, I wanted a baby doll silhouette with a knit look bodice, flowy ruffles, and thin straps. I started by creating a swatch of one of my favorite stitches with this gorgeous color changing yarn. To make this stitch, start with a slip knot, then chain until the chains can wrap comfortably around your chest. Then, skip the first chain and yarn over slip stitch into the second chain from your hook. To do this, yarn over, insert your hook into the chain, pull up a loop, then slide that same loop through the other two loops on your hook. Do this in every chain to make row one. Optionally, you can use your fingers to help you slide the loops through, but it also works without using your fingers. To start row two, chain one and turn your work. Find the third loop of the first stitch, so count one, two, and three, insert your hook into that loop and slip stitch. Yarn over slip stitch into the third loop of every stitch. Right now we're working on the back side of our work. The third loop is the one closest to you and you can find it by counting from the top. All you have to do is yarn over, insert your hook into the third loop and slip stitch. Once again, count one, two, and yarn over and insert your hook into the third loop that's closest to you, then slip stitch. Do this in every stitch to complete the second row. To start row three, chain one and turn your work just like before. This time, insert your hook into the third loop that's away from you. Yarn over, insert your hook into that third loop and slip stitch. Right now, we're working on the front side of our work. This side will have the knit look texture. Repeat the steps for row two and three until the piece is the desired size. So alternate between working into the third loop closest to you, then for the next row, work into the third loop that's facing away from you and repeat. Count the loops one, two, then yarn over and slip stitch into the third loop. I was going to make vertical rows, so I started by chaining the length that I wanted for the bodice, but then after I tried it on, I liked the horizontal texture more, so I frogged the entire thing, which is every crocheter's nightmare, but I was having such a fun time watching Love is Blind Season 6 that I honestly liked the fact that I could spend more time on the project while watching it instead of completing my university assignments. Then I restarted by chaining the length that could wrap tightly around my chest. Quick little update on my piece. So instead of making the piece wide enough to fit my chest and then working the rows this way, I decided to make it long enough to wrap around my chest and now I'm just gonna make it wide enough to cover my chest. I don't know whether I like the back texture or the texture at the front. You can try it out with different ways. So I kind of like this, then I also kind of like this. My cats kept me company throughout this whole project. I think they just like my new bedding, but I'm going to pretend that they knew I missed them. When you're working on the back side of your work in the third loop closest to you, this is what it should look like. And when you're working on the right side or the side with the knit texture in the third loop facing away from you, this is what that should look like. Crochet rows until the bodice can cover your chest. The problem with this stitch is that it curls inwards. So I decided to make a stretchy panel at the back to make it fit better and to straighten the piece a bit. My inspiration was the back of this dress that has a stretchy part that I wanted to replicate with rows of single crochet. So I chained one and single crocheted across the edge of my piece, inserting my hook as close to the edge as possible. This will help straighten the piece out a bit and make a base for the stretchy part at the back. But if your work is the perfect fit, you don't need to do this step. Mine was uncomfortably tight, so after finishing the first row, I chained one, turned my work, and crocheted rows of one single crochet in every stitch until it wrapped more comfortably around my chest. Yes, I won yarn chicken. My weird hand gestures here just wanted to let you know that I'm going to crochet rows back and forth until it's wide enough. Doing this step stopped the curling and straightened the piece out a bit. I was so happy that I won yarn chicken that I cut an extra long piece for sewing and fastened off my work. 
I definitely didn't need a yarn tail this long, but I guess I have yarn to spare now. After that, I used a bobby pin to align the edges, even though I've got a hundred stitch markers lying around. And then I used a needle to sew the bodice closed by joining both the edges at the back, sewing all the way up. And that's what the finished bodice looks like from the back and the front. Next, I wanted to make a border of half double crochets to straighten out the bottom of the bodice before starting the ruffles. I attached the yarn, chained two, and then half double crocheted along the edges of the bottom of the bodice. Along the single crochet part, I worked as close to the edge as possible, inserting my hook as close to it as possible like this, but when I reached the knit texture part, I inserted one half double crochet into the third loop only of the stitches so that the knit texture at the bottom doesn't get ruined. I did this all the way around until I reached back to where I made my first half double crochet, then I inserted my hook through it and slip stitched to join, ending this round. To start the ruffles, I chained three and then double crocheted into the first stitch. The pattern for the ruffles is one double crochet and then two double crochets in the next stitch. I repeated this pattern all the way around. The two double crochets in the same stitch act as an increase, which makes the ruffles. So if you wanted the bottom part of the top to be more roughly, you could do two double crochets in every stitch instead of doing the pattern of one, then two double crochets in the same stitch. Another tip I have is that to make the ruffles more flowy, less stiff, and to give it more drape, switch to a hook that's one size larger than the one you used for the top. I used a 9mm hook for the bodice, so I switched to a 10mm hook when making the ruffles. I noticed that this made the stitches bigger and less stiff, giving me more drape, more flow. This is what the first row of ruffles will look like. The next step is to just crochet rows of double crochet until the ruffle part is as long as you want it to be. Slip stitch into the third chain to end the previous round, then chain 3 to start the next round. Insert one double crochet into every stitch all the way around, starting from the stitch that's closest to the chain 3. Then repeat these steps until the ruffle part is as long as you want it to be. For this part, you don't have to do two double crochets, just one double crochet in every stitch, round and round and round. I don't know why, but I have this need to repeat myself to make sure you're not confused, but once again, to end the round, slip stitch into the third chain, then chain three to start the next round, and then just insert one double crochet into every stitch to make another round. The important thing here is to make sure that you're not accidentally skipping a stitch, and to make sure that you're not doing two double crochets in the same stitch, just one double crochet in every stitch. There's my weird hand gesture again, just go round and round and round. After the ruffles, I tried the top on and used bobby pins to mark the places where I wanted the strap to be. You might need some help for this since my sister helped put the markers on the back side and measure how long my straps needed to be. The strap will run from the front to the back marker as a single chain length. Attach your yarn into the marked place and then chain tightly until you have the desired length. Keep in mind that chains are a bit stretchy, so make it one inch less than the measurement you need. Slip stitch into the marked stitch at the back and fasten off your work to end the straps. Leaving a long tail to weave it in later because we're responsible crocheters who don't want our hard work to unravel later on. Repeat this on the other side and we're all done. These are clips from my digital camera and I'm the type of person who mentions my sister all the time. So those are my sister's hands making sure everything looks good, good for the guys. pictures we're taking. If you have a cat or dog, you need to crochet them a cute little pet dress. I started with a slip knot and chained a length that could wrap loosely around my cat's body. This is Lily, by the way. I also used a dress my sister sewed for Lily as a guide for size. After making the length of chains, I slip stitched into the first chain to make a circle, and then I inserted one single crochet in every chain to make the first round. I crocheted rounds of single crochet until I had the length that I wanted for the bodice. After that, I started the round for the ruffles with a chain 3, then inserted 2 double crochets into every stitch. I did rounds of 1 double crochet in every stitch until the ruffle part was as long as I wanted it to be. I decided to name this top and pet dress after Lily, so here's a look at the finished Lily baby doll top and pet dress. While my sister's helping me put the dress on, here's a bit of a backstory on Lily. She randomly showed up one day in my backyard and just never left, so we brought her indoors. She's so extremely sophisticated, and if you've seen the Mean Girl cat post on TikTok, Lily's literally the opposite. She's just the sweetest girl.
If you're wondering what I'm doing here, I honestly was too. The idea was to make a tube top with a split hem design, but I felt so anxious when deciding the measurements, so I decided to do what people who sew do and make sort of a pattern for the top to help me get the perfect measurement. I wrapped an old t-shirt around me in the shape I wanted for the tube top and adjusted the lengths until I liked how it looked. If you're making this top, definitely make the length slightly past your hip so the hem can split around it. Then I took the measurements for how long I wanted the top to be and how long the joining on the sides would be until it splits. This definitely helped me feel more confident that I would like the final result since I was crocheting the right size. I also took a measurement of my chest to estimate how wide the piece would need to be to wrap around me. Then I experimented with a bunch of variations of half double crochet stitches. There's so much variety and texture differences to explore with half double crochets, it's insane. I wanted to create a ribbing texture so that the top would look more interesting since the design is more straightforward and simple. I recently discovered how to foundation half double crochet and this is life changing. Make a slip knot and chain two. Yarn over and insert your hook into the second chain. Pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through the loop. Then yarn over and pull through all three loops to make the first half double crochet stitch. To make the next stitch, insert your hook into the V shape at the bottom of your work. Pull up a loop and you'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through one, then yarn over and pull through all three loops. Insert your hook into the V shape at the bottom and repeat the steps to foundation half double crochet until you have the desired length for the top. This technique helps you avoid crocheting a long chain and then crocheting one half double crochet into every stitch. You can definitely still do that since it's easier, but this will help you save time and it's honestly faster once you get the hang of it. After you're done with the first row, chain one and turn your work to start the next row. Now we're going to work into the back loops only of every stitch. So yarn over and half double crochet into the back loops of every stitch to make the next row. When you're done with a row and want to start a new row, chain one, turn your work, then half double crochet into the back loops only of every stitch. Crochet rows of back loop only half double crochets until the piece can wrap slightly tightly around you. The next part's a bit tricky to explain since I can't think of the right term to use, but basically measure the length you want for the joined part on the side and then place a stitch marker on the edge of your piece to mark that length. Fold your work in half, insert your hook into the edge of the other side and slip stitch to join. Then turn your work so you can join the stitches together until you reach where the marker is. To do this, insert your hook through the stitches on one side and the edge of the other side, then slip stitch. Make sure that you're not making your slip stitches too tight, so pull your hook a little bit looser when you're making the slip stitches because if they're too tight, your work can bunch up and this can affect the shape of the design. Once you're done joining, chain one and fasten off to end your work. Next, I wanted to make a border at the top to make the piece neater and so that the top is less likely to fall off because there's going to be a slightly tighter border around the top edge. I inserted my hook as close to the edge as possible and half double crocheted all the way around the top edge of the top. I made the half double crochet stitches as close to each other as possible so that the border isn't too tight and so that there aren't any holes in the border. To end my work, I slip stitched into the first stitch and fastened off. I ended up loving this top more than I thought I would because it's such a perfect going out top for summer. For the next top, I foundation half double crocheted the length I wanted for the top, then crocheted rows of one half double crochet in every stitch until the piece was wide enough to wrap around me. Then I made a short ribbing border for the bottom edge. I chained the length I wanted for the ribbing, then inserted one half double crochet into every chain to make the first row. Then I inserted my hook as close to the edge as possible and slip stitched to join the ribbing piece to the bottom edge, then slip stitch into the area next to it. Turned my work and half double crocheted into the back loops only of every stitch. Since I'm using black yarn, this is a bit hard to see, but work only into the back loops of every stitch.
Once I reached the other corner, I repeated the same steps. So chain one, turn your work and half double crochet into the back loops only of every stitch, slip stitch into the edge of the top, then slip stitch into the area next to it and repeat. This top is more of an intermediate level design, so this part might be more confusing to understand. If you're making a full length top like me, the ribbing will help stretch the bottom of the top to give a better fit around your hips. Crochet ribbing along the bottom edge of the top all the way to the end. The ribbing part made me want to pull my hair out, but I put on Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which is my favorite movie from the franchise, and the project became a bit more bearable, so I highly recommend putting on your comfort movie or TV show. Then I folded my work like this and then slip stitched to join the two edges together so that I could have a closed back. Insert your hook through the edges of both pieces and then slip stitch to join. The top looked a bit plain so I decided to change the neckline. I was going for a soft sweetheart neckline so I pinched the front of the top and then sewed through the folds multiple times till it was tight and secure and then I finished it off with a knot. After that, I tried the top on and placed stitch markers for where I wanted the straps to be, how wide I wanted the straps to be, and then I also asked my sister for some help to measure how long the straps should be. I attached my yarn at one end and chained the length I wanted for the strap. Now we're going to use the same technique as the ribbing, and yes, it's going to be just as confusing, but please bear with me. I crocheted rows of half double crochets until the strap was as thick as I wanted to be. But I didn't work in the back loops only, I just did regular half double crochets and slip stitched into the edges on both sides to join the rows for the straps to the top. So after completing a row, I turned my work around and now I'm going to half double crochet all the way back until I reach the other side. Then I'm going to slip stitch to join this row to the top, slip stitch into the area next to it, turn my work and then start another row of half double crochets until I reach the other side again and repeat. Although this top was much harder to crochet, it's so worth it because now I can use ribbons and bows to change the design by adding one ribbon in the front or two around the straps because at the end of the day, bows make everything cuter. 